how's it going guys and gals? I'm out here in Rainbow Falls area, riding area, and just on the main road, 351 I do believe it's called. Well, it has a name too, it's called Fern Creek. Woohoo, let's go up here. And, uh, yeah, I'm able to come out here on a Monday. Has a has been a long time since I've come out on a Monday. I forgot my wife had most of the week off due to her mother being in town. So they were just going to go shopping. And they know, you know, that's really not a guy activity. And if I go, then I'll probably start spending money and buying some stuff for me. And i uh, rather not. So... I decided to come out and go for a ride. Check on a tree that's down, already did that. Just to report back on the size and how it looks and that way the guys with the chainsaws have an idea or manpower they need. I wish I had a chainsaw, but I don't. <laughs> I've looked at them a few times, just one of those things, like, I don't live close enough to some of these areas where it would really be enjoyable to carry the chainsaw around, just to carry it around, and just to get out here. I mean, there's a lot of people that live a lot closer than I do, so I usually just relay the message. If I ever have an ATV or side-by-side, -side, probably a side-by-side, -side. if I ever had a 50-inch side-by-side, I would uh, definitely get a chainsaw and mount it and just carry it around because, well, you have a lot of space, right? <laughs> you, got, you got easy uh, carrying capacity there, and, you know, especially in Colorado where there's a lot of trees. I mean, obviously some areas, desert, you don't need, not going to need a chainsaw, but have a mount for a Ford and just have it for just in case, you know? That way you can start it up and maybe... Uh, clear trail. That way you don't have to go around stuff either. And that's the downside. A lot of people go around shit. And it, okay, it's not, a, I don't find it a big deal if you go around, but sometimes it's just not good to do. That, that where the tree is down, it's a short trail. You can look in the description and I'll put a link there to that little video of the tree down, but there's no reason to go around because there's this trail that goes north and there's a uh, one other trail and one road. Well, technically two roads. Uh, one road you could take a OHV on and one you have to be plated, but point being there's other ways north and they all go to the really, can get to the same spot, go to the same spot for the two other trails, this one included. So people, you know, it looks like side by side slash ATVs have been the ones going around because the bank's pretty steep and loose and mucky now there's ruts and it's going to be tore up and the more people that go on it the more or go around the worse it's going to get and now colorado you're not from here originally or from here anyways you don't realize that this this soil stuff grows very slowly it's not that great great of soil it's more rocky, decomposing granite, like less than an inch below most of this. So as soon as you uncover the top layer, it just erodes because it's this gravel that is easily washed away in heavy rains. That's why our trails out here typically need a, quite a bit of maintenance. And, uh... Yeah, that's a real issue and people don't realize that. So if you cut a trail up to get around something, there's a good chance, well, there it's going to be there if people start using it as like a normal trail because now they think it's a trail. Should it go to like an overlook and, well, they call those social trails. Because somebody created it. Maybe it goes to something interesting and now, everyone sees a trail and sometimes trails aren't marked good so you have no idea. Forest Service maps are really awful. You 
uh, they're not topo, they don't really show you the land per se. So you tend to not have an idea, even if you have a map, where you're at. So if it looks well burned in, like this, this illegal trail, but some social trails look like this, you end up going that way because you don't know. And uh, those trails will be there forever, really, just because unless the Forest Service comes through and what they do is they knock down like all these, they cause more destruction to hide a trail than just saying, eh, maybe we should leave this trail, you know? Um, and they spend a lot of money to like hide a trail. And maybe they'll only hide like the first 100 feet or 100 yards in just so you can't see the trail anymore. It's like all devastated, trees down, boom, boom, boom. So they cut down a lot of trees that cause a lot of devastation themselves to hide a trail. But the point being is that these trails erode, or once you put a trail under this a really thin vegetation, topsoil, it just wash, it starts washing away and it starts eroding. It erodes really easy. So going around something, you really have to think about. It's not, and, and you should take a real conscious effort or decision, like, do I need to go around? And I know some people are very against going around, so they're going to say no. You never go around, at least publicly, and then you, you go out riding with them and they'll go around. <laughs> so that's kind of a joke. Um, I think it's a case-by-case it's -case situation. This case, there's t two other trails and one OHV road that go, go to the same spot. So there's really, and they're all short, there's no reason to go around something. Um, now you might be in a trail 20 miles in, or you've been riding 50 miles, maybe gas stops, especially the bigger bikes. You've already done 60 miles, you're on some single track, you have another 15 miles of single track to go, and you come to a, uh, a tree down, a large tree, and the best way, and it has a lot of branches sticking up, sticking down, you're, you're not really clearing anything, kind of like the tree that I just, uh, was that? Your, your only option then is pretty much to go around. You don't have enough fuel maybe to go back. But when you go around, you should uh, do it in the least destructive manner as possible. Meaning, don't sit there and gun your bike up the hill. Don't sit there and gun your bike if it's a downhill. Why, why are you giving any gas? Just coast down and give it a minimum amount of wheel spin as possible and go around the tree. It's really that easy. And I've gone around obstacles and stopped and looked at my tra track and you can't even see it because you are, I, I am really gentle. You know, I can putz up this. Like, <laughs> I'm barely moving any dirt going up this. You know, it's a lot of uh, clutch and throttle control. But, sadly, people act like they, I'm going around the trail, so I gotta gun it. You know, the worst case is like, have, have your, if you're with buddies, have them help you go around so you don't cause as much damage. If you can go over, it's always best to uh, go over. By can, I mean, if you're, you and your buddy have to lift the bike and go over, hey, you know, that's what you do. 631. Yay! Let's go up here, over here. See, I'm just putzing off. Although I do have a rock loose, so I'm just taking it easy going up by myself. And I and I agree that a lot of this comes with experience, you know. And riding in an area, you start learning the soil type what you can or can't do. What you can do back east, in the eastern states, you can't really do here. I mean, stuff grows fast in a lot of wetter states. So, you know, you go off trail, yeah, you might create a rut, but that rut's gonna be overgrown by the end of summer. You're never gonna know it's there, really.
Yeah, I'm sitting. I'm just being silly because I'm talking. But this is always a fun little trail. This is like one of the harder ATV trails. It used to be a lot worse. It was really eroded. They've uh, brought brought a trail machine down and kind of leveled out the erosion spots that were causing people to have issues. Well, hopefully, guys, I, I don't. I hate lecturing people, but you know, at the same time, because I'm not perfect either. I mean, that's why I talk about like well, how you should go around in a respectful manner if you have to, <laughs> because sometimes you do. Um, you know, in that case, I didn't go around the tree because, I mean, it was like two minutes, and I'm back out. Another two minutes, I'm, I was heading up this. I mean, it wasn't really a big deal. And if you do see a ranger, let them know, because if they don't know about it, and they, they might, they'll clear it real quick. They're pretty good about it if you come across a ranger. Now granted, they don't make it easy contacting ranger offices. Now I do happen to have some contacts. So I have some emails, uh, seeing as my Woodland Park uh, buddy hasn't uh, gone to it, I will let them know. He, he told me he'd let me know if he, when he does it, if he could get out and do it. But he knows a lot of other people that have free time. So yeah, it might take a few people. If I can get back out here to help, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. In fact, I'm gonna let them know when I do have a sales single that hey I checked it out here's the picture and you know <laughs> you're gonna need a few people and if I can come back up if he can do it during the week um, awesome if not then I, I will use some of my day on the weekend to come back and clear that tree I mean, just what you do to take care of the land, right? That's a trail user. I mean, pretty much other than the OHV sticker that costs only $25.25 25, uh, which is nothing, and in this state goes to the trails, uh, you know, donating a little time and like me coming out here. Like I didn't have to come out here to look at that tree to get the size. I could have went and done something else, but I was like, I'm, I plan to be in the neighborhood why not? <laughs> so I use some of my time and, you know, gas and whatever, wear and tear on the bike, come, come and check it out. It's just what you do. So guys, gals, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me yap. Please take care. Uh, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. I do a lot of different videos. Have a good one.